If you've ever wondered what the difference is between Spring Framework and Spring Boot, and when you should use one over the other, you're in the right place. My name is Daniel, and today we are diving into these two powerful Java tools that have been shaping enterprise apps for years. Stick around, and by the end of this video, you'll understand not just how they work, but when to choose each one, depending on your project needs, whether you're building a quick prototype, a complex legacy integration, or anything in between. Guys, make sure you check out all the useful links in the description after watching this video. There might be some nice discounts there. Let's get into it. Alright, my friends, let's talk about the Spring Framework. It's basically a big toolkit that's been around since 2003, helping people build Java apps for businesses. Even though it's been around a while, it's still super useful and powerful. The main idea behind Spring is called Inversion of Control, or IOC. Sounds fancy, but it just means Spring handles connecting everything your app needs instead of you doing it yourself. Guys, you can think of it like a personal assistant, making sure all the parts talk to each other properly. Spring also has something called aspect-oriented programming, which lets you handle stuff like logging, security and transactions without messing up your main code. So you can add things like logging everywhere with just a few simple notes. What's cool about it, guys, is that it's modular. You can pick only the parts you need, like Core for basics or MVC for web apps. No need to carry around extras you don't use. That said, setting it up can get tricky. You often have to write a bunch of config files to tell this thing how to work. Experienced devs love the control, but it can be overwhelming for beginners. So Spring's powerful and flexible just takes a bit of time to get used to. Guys, before we move on, I try to make my content fun instead of boring. And in return, please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy the content I make. Now, my friends, let's talk about Spring Boot, the part that really makes things easier. It's not a replacement for Spring Framework, but builds on top of it. Think of it as a younger sibling who's great at making smart choices for you. Spring Boot's big idea is convention over configuration. Instead of you setting up every little detail, it guesses what you need based on the stuff in your project. This cuts out tons of annoying setup work. It uses auto configuration to do this. If it sees a database driver, it sets up a database connection. If it finds web stuff, it gets a web server ready. It's like having an expert automatically configure your app. Another cool thing, embedded servers. Guys, you don't need to install or deploy to a separate server like Tomcat. Spring Boot includes one inside your app, so you just run it with one command or click. Super handy for development. It also offers starter dependencies, bundles of libraries that work well together. Want web features, folks? Add the web starter. Need database access? Use the data starter. No more worrying about library versions. Plus, it comes with built-in production-ready features like health checks, metrics, and monitoring. So your app is ready to go live without extra hassle. Guys, before we jump back in, quick word about something that can really help if you're working with Spring apps. Tux cares endless lifecycle support for Spring. Here's the deal. A lot of Spring Framework and Spring Boot versions stop getting security updates after a while, which can leave your apps exposed and at risk. Taxcare steps in with extended security fixes for those older versions, so you get extra years of protection without scrambling to upgrade right away. That means fewer worries about vulnerabilities while you take your time planning your next move. It's super simple to set up too. Just update your build configs and switch to their supported libraries. Taxcare stays on top of new security issues and patches them fast, so your apps stay safe and compliant. If you are working with Spring, it's definitely worth checking out. I've linked Taxcare down below, so take a look and see how it can help keep your projects secure. Thanks so much to Taxcare for supporting me. Now let's get back to the video, guys. Key differences. Okay, folks, now let's dig into the actual differences between these two technologies, because this is where a lot of the confusion comes from. The first major difference is in configuration complexity. With traditional Spring Framework, you are writing tons of XML files or Java configuration classes to wire everything together. Every bean, every dependency, every aspect of your application needs to be explicitly configured. It's powerful but time-consuming. But Spring Boot, folks, flips this on its head with auto-configuration. It looks at your class path, examines your existing configuration, and makes educated guesses about what you want to do. In most cases, these guesses are spot-on, which means you can get a fully functional application running with minimal configuration. The difference in development speed is honestly night and day. 
Another huge difference, my friends, is in project setup and bootstrapping. Starting a new project traditionally involves creating the structure, configuring build files and setting up application contexts. Leave alone a whole bunch of other setup tasks that can take hours or even days for complex apps. With Spring Boot you can literally go to their website, generate a new project with your chosen dependencies and have a running application in minutes. Now guys, the deployment model is completely different too. Traditional Spring applications typically get packaged as WAR files that you deploy to external application servers like Tomcat or WebLogic. This deployment model works fine, but it adds complexity and dependencies on external infrastructure. Spring Boot applications, on the other hand, are typically packaged as executable JAR files with embedded servers. You can run them anywhere Java is installed, which makes deployment and distribution so much simpler. And folks, when it comes to flexibility versus convenience, there is definitely a trade-off. Spring Framework gives you complete control over every aspect of your application's configuration. If you have very specific requirements or need to customize behavior in unusual ways, this flexibility is invaluable. Spring Boot prioritizes convenience and speed of development, sometimes at the expense of fine-grained control. However, it's important to note that you can still customize pretty much anything in Spring Boot. It just requires a bit more work to override the default conventions. The learning curve is another significant difference, guys. Spring Framework can be challenging to start with because you need to understand lots of things from dependency injection to various modules and how to configure everything properly. Spring Boot is easier because it handles so much complexity behind the scenes. You can build functional applications while gradually learning the underlying concepts. Let me break down when you'd pick one over the other, because that's probably your main question. So folks, Spring Boot is great for most modern apps, microservices, REST APIs, as well as web apps and typical enterprise projects. Its auto-configuration and starters make getting started super fast, and the embedded server fits well with cloud and container setups. It's also perfect for quick prototypes or demos when you need to move fast. You can go from idea to working app in hours instead of days. For learning, Spring Boot is usually better since new devs can focus on the app logic without getting stuck in configs. Later, you can dive into the full Spring framework if you want. But sometimes, my friends, the traditional framework is the way to go. For big complex apps with specific setup needs, its detailed control can be a must. Some companies have pipelines built around the classic war deployments, so it fits better there. If you're dealing with legacy systems or need custom integrations, guys, the framework's flexibility helps a lot. And for apps where performance tuning is critical, explicitly configuring Spring Framework might give you the edge over Spring Boot's auto-configuration. Final thoughts. All right, my friends, that's a wrap on this head-to-head -head comparison. Both are powerful tools, but they shine in different ways. If you want speed, simplicity, and to get your app running fast, Spring Boot is the way to go. If you need full control and are working on complex custom projects, the classic Spring Framework might be your best bet. Now it's your turn. Try them out yourself, guys. Play around, see which one fits your style and project needs better. And if you have any questions, experiences or tips, drop a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think or help you out. Feel free to check out the links in the description below. You might find some discounts there. As usual, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and till next time.